the big orange store. this parking lot. So there it is, rigid universal miter saw stand. Thing's a beast, it's huge. I'm excited, I'm very excited. <laughs> nice, that was quick too. Like I said, it was a uh, online deal only. And uh, so they didn't have any on stock in the store and I probably could have just asked them to give me the one they had in the store but they had to ship it up from the lower 48 and they got it here in a week when it, when I when I ordered it they said yeah it'll be there on the 18th and I said oh, okay <laughs> when I ordered my generator it must it take my I guess it took my generator maybe a month and a half to two months to get here uh, but that was here in a week which is awesome That's what I'm going to do this weekend. I'm going to put that together. <laughs> oh, hi. So this week's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I thought we'd do a little bit of chit-chatting. I'm going to put this together, and you probably don't want to watch me put a piece of equipment together. I picked this up um, yesterday on Friday after work. It's a table, a uh, movable, adjustable table for the chop saw that a viewer was kind enough to send to me. Um, and I have to start getting ready to build a cabin, so I'm going to start putting all this equipment together and getting it all covered up. But I, I got a... Uh, a, a pretty neat comment in this last week's video that I did uh, that asked about me living in Alaska and living in a trailer and what was that like and wanted me to explain a whole bunch of stuff over it. And I thought it'd be fun or informative just to let you guys all know what it's like living in a trailer in Alaska for two winters now, two winters in a row. <laughs> this big old package for a pen. Ryobi Fine Point Permanent Marker. Cool.
There we go. <laughs> So I moved to Alaska in 2013. Um, I'd lived here before, uh, 1998 to 2001, uh, after I got divorced, and I talked about that before. And I had always wanted to live in Alaska. It just was amazing to me. So that short period of time that I lived in Alaska, I lived in an apartment in Fairbanks. I lived in a log cabin outside of Fairbanks, um, and, and basically the Fairbanks interior area. Uh, I went from there to Houston, Texas, from Houston, Texas, back to California, uh, when my daughters finally reached the age of adulthood, you know, they finally graduated. My youngest one finally graduated from high school. She was living with me. I, I said that was it, and I was moving back here. So I moved up here in an old motorhome, um, and I'll, uh, I'll show you a picture. I think I've got some pictures of the old motorhome. Um, I still have the motorhome, but I moved up here and parked that on the back of Brother Will uh, on the back of his property and plugged it in. So while I was living in a trailer in Alaska at that point, um, I was 100% still on the grid. You know, I used their shower, I used their restroom. Um, I didn't keep water in the trailer, running water in the trailer. I'd just go in the house and fill up jugs. Uh, when I finally made the move to the property here, or actually a couple of years before I did, and I knew this was coming, I, I bought the fifth wheel trailer that I'm currently in. Um, and when I finally made that move to this property uh, in October of 2020, um, I, since then, have been living 100% off grid in the trailer. It's been challenging. It's been challenging to say the least. There's a lot of things that you don't take into consideration when you go off grid. And especially when you go off a grid in the, uh, in the way that I did. Because I still work full time. Um, so you have to take into consideration things like how do you do laundry? You keep your clothes in good shape and work. Um, how do you use a restroom? Um, in that case, I built an outhouse. Uh, you know, what are you going to do for water? I haul water. What are you going to do for cooking? Well, I use propane for that. Um, how are you going to heat your trailer? Uh, I had a couple of options. Option one was to go ahead and possibly put a wood stove in here, uh, but I didn't intend on actually spending more than one winter in the trailer. Um, the plan was always spend the first winter in the trailer, build the cabin in 2021, and then move the trailer off the property because where the trailer's parked right now is actually where the parking is going to be for the property. Um, and it's also access to the garden area. Uh, what happened in 2021 with lumber prices pretty much just shot that plan to pieces. Um, so I, I put that off, figured I could do one more year in the trailer. But the biggest thing that I think um, I did not take into consideration was how cold it gets in a trailer because trailers are not designed for this kind of weather. I hate that sound. I don't want you to think by any stretch of the imagination that this trailer is custom and in great shape. As you can tell, by the siding here and by looking at the sides of it. This is an old trailer. Um, and I would not actually feel comfortable pulling it down the road. <laughs> but with the with the added addition of the tarp on top of the trailer, um, it stayed relatively dry inside. I've had a couple of issues where it leaked. Uh, last year I had to go through and, and add new caulking all around all the vents um, because one time or more, <clears throat> I may have woken up with water falling on my bed while I was sleeping in it. Um, but yeah, it's not a, it, it's not a fancy new trailer. Um, and it doesn't have many amenities that most modern trailers would have. Um, I had to look at a bunch of different things when I did this. And one of the biggest issues for me was storage because I don't, I have no storage in a trailer at all. And as I, as I acquire tools and as I acquire things that I want to have in the house, um, 
I need to find a place to keep them. And, and that's basically what the motorhome has become now parked over at uh, Brother Will's mother-in-law's house. Um, she's got big covered parking over there. So I, I parked it underneath the awning over there. Uh, but that's become basically my storage unit for the time being. So if you have a trailer at home um, and you've used it for camping with your family and stuff like that, you probably think, oh my gosh, that's easy. You know, we take our trailer everywhere and we do all kinds of stuff in it. We stay on, you know, we stay places at, you know, for a week or for two weeks or sometimes maybe even three weeks or, you know, I have a piece of property and we drive our trailer up there and we spend weekends at it. Understand that it's not the same situation as a trailer that doesn't have any water, that doesn't have a bathroom, that has limited storage capacity and sure there's only one person living in this trailer but i live in it 24 hours a day basically seven days a week 365 days a year so when yours is cleaned up and sitting in your driveway and you can go ahead and grab out the power tools and make any repairs or any any fix-ups that need to be done or you know when you go to clean out your tanks or when you go to fill up your water tank or when you go to charge up your batteries you just plug it into your house i don't have those luxuries so in order to compensate for that i did two things number one i got a generator um, because the generator that i got is also designed to back up the cabin once the cabin is built and i picked up a solar panel uh, to top off the single 12 volt deep cycle marine battery that i have um, that has its own uh, problems shall we say uh, lighting your cabin in the winter or lighting your trailer in the winter in alaska in the summer it's not that big of an issue because we'll i mean right now it's not getting dark till 9 p.m but we'll get to a point where uh, it won't get dark Till midnight <laughs> and it's sunny again by about 3 30 in the morning so lighting the trailer is not an issue then you're trying to shade everything but uh, light in the winter can be an issue so i've tackled that a couple of ways um, i use kerosene lamps and i ran my i changed my lighting system inside to uh 12 volt 18 inch 12 volt led strip lights and i have those wired to the battery so that i could keep some semblance of light inside that's more than just a kerosene lamp because your mood can be affected greatly by the amount of light that you have around you. If you're stuck in an office all day long, every single day, and you don't get off of work until it gets dark and you go outside, you'll become, eventually you become morose, sad, depressed. Uh, and you could tell because when you're not working and you're out in the sunshine, you can really, you really feel like a whole different person. Uh, and I didn't want that to happen in the winter. Like I said, I live here by myself. Um, I thought it was very important to make sure that I have some kind of lighting in there that really makes a difference. So the quick fix was picking up those 18 inch LED strip lights from one of the local camper supply places here. Uh, and I think I paid 30 bucks a piece for them. They'll last forever. I mean, I'll, I'll probably take those out of there and put them in the cabin uh, at some point as well. Um, and they do not draw much electricity. That single battery, uh, once I get a full charge on it, will last me three to four days without even having to worry about charging it back up again. <clears throat> the 
So other than the lights that I have inside the trailer, the only thing else I use electricity for is to basically charge my electronic equipment. So the battery for this camera, um, to run, I have a couple of battery bank, uh, basically cell phone chargers. Uh, so to recharge the cell phone and that kind of stuff, that's, that's all I really use electricity for uh, at this point. If I'm going to be running any power tools, I fire up the generator, run an extension cord from it, and then work the power tools off of that. Uh, and when I edit video, um, I usually, I fire up the generator because I have multiple hard drives. And I, while I probably could run those off the battery, I prefer not to, and I use that as the excuse to charge up the battery at the same time. Um, usually I'm editing two or three days a week, so it, it really makes sure that I keep a good charge on that battery. But I will tell you that this single solar panel over here made a big difference. Since the sun started coming up on the higher and higher on the horizon, I guess, um, you know, the, the, the angle of the sun in the sky uh, has really increased over the last month. Uh, in, the, in the month of March alone, we'll gain three hours of daylight here in Alaska, or my part of Alaska. Um, when I fired up the charger the last couple of times, fired up the generator, had the charger plugged in the last couple of times to top off the battery, it was at 82%. So that solar panel, single solar panel, is making a lot of difference. This solar panel cost me like 160 bucks um, for the, it's a 180 watt solar panel and it came with all the, all the cables and everything required to it. And normal retail price, I think at Home Depot was like 700 bucks. Once a year they go on sale. The brand name is Nature Power on this one. Um, will I use this in the cabin? Probably not. I'd like to match my solar panels in the cabin and I'm looking at 300 watts each, 300 to 300, 320 watt each. Um, so I can minimize the number of panels I actually have to have, but I'll keep this one around because I've got some other ideas for it in the future. Uh, your trailer, unfortunately, if it's newer, will require a lot more electricity than my trailer does. Again, I don't have running water in there, so I don't have to run a pump. Um, I'm not constantly, I, I am cooking in there, but I don't run a fan. Um, and my refrigerator runs off of the propane setting as opposed to the electrical setting because, again, I don't have the electrical to, to be able to pull it off. One of the things that I realized right off the bat, you know, mainly when I was over at Brother Will's house and I was even plugged into his electricity over at his place, was that it gets cold enough eventually here in Alaska that the vent on the back of your refrigerator freezer on the outside of the trailer uh, will no longer allow the trailer or the refrigerator to process the cooling gases the way it's supposed to and it freezes. Uh, it freezes up and it just quits working. Broke my neck there. The other thing you get to deal a lot with here in Alaska, especially from October through pretty much April or May, is this, ice. <laughs> so we've talked about lighting, um, and we've talked about electrical uses for the inside of the trailer. Um, we've talked about the fact that I don't have water, that I haul water. Um, so how do I do things like laundry, and how do I keep showered and cleaned up? Um, you know, what do I do uh, to basically make myself presentable for work every single day? Well, for that, like I said, I haul water, so I'll head over to Brother Will's house a couple of times a week for showers. Or if I'm really working around the property and getting mucky and dirty and sweaty, I'll actually head over there on that afternoon before I turn in. Um, and I, I use his shower to get cleaned up. For laundry, I go to town and I do my laundry at the laundromat. It's more expensive than if you did it at home, but again, I don't have electricity and I don't have water here on the property to be able to do it even if I wanted to. The nice thing is I do laundry once a week, um, and when I'm doing that laundry, on that one period, basically in the time it takes to do one load, I'm doing three or four loads, getting all done in one shot. So I don't waste my whole day doing laundry. I kind of like that. Um, taking care of personal business, I built the outhouse for that. Uh, as a guy, obviously it's pretty easier. It's pretty easy for me. There's, I only have to use that half the time as ladies would. Um, that's all stuff you have to take into consideration though. Uh, and then we have to talk about, because I mentioned it already, the cold of Alaska is how do you keep a trailer warm. Um, they're not designed for year-round living. 
I don't really care what anybody says. They may be designed for year-round living in Florida, uh, but they're not designed for year-round living in Alaska. There are two places that you're going to lose most of your heat in any building whatsoever, and that is the floor and the roof. The floor, as it gets cold, chills all the air in the bottom, and then the air, as it gets warm, goes to the roof and heads right out the top. Um, by not doing something to, to stop either one of those, you end up in a losing battle. Um, and I've had losing battles here since I started this. Uh, the last two winters were... This winter was a lot more comfortable than last winter was. I'll just put it that way. The first winter that I was on this property, I thought to myself, my gosh, how much would it cost me to rent a place? <laughs> um, but you can... Uh, alleviate some of that by throwing some extra carpets on the floor. Um, actually, I could have climbed underneath this trailer and applied what they call blue board, which is like styrofoam. It's a heavy duty thick board. We call it blue board because it's blue. Uh, an insulating board that um, I could have attached to the bottom of the trailer, the floor, and actually allowed the floor to stay much warmer than it was. And that would have gone a long way to saving a lot of heat and energy. But it's a trailer and I hadn't, I'm, I'm not intending on living in it forever. Um, I could have put a wood stove in there, but again, I'm not putting that much work and money and effort into something that was actually only supposed to be a one-year deal for me. Uh, so the way I've heated my place is using Buddy heaters. Um, and I'm not going to tell you that it is 100% safe to use a Buddy heater indoors because it's an open flame. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you that it's not. I will tell you that Buddy Heaters advertise as safe to use inside and that I've used a Buddy Heater to heat the inside of this trailer and my motorhome since 2013. So for the last nine years, I've used a Buddy Heater inside and it's not a problem. I don't know if it would make a difference in a house or a cabin uh, because those are much more airtight and much more insulated. I guarantee you that when the wind blows, I feel the wind while I'm sitting on the couch inside the trailer, even with everything closed. So. There's that part too. Um, but I've used a buddy heater and I use the regular size barbecue propane bottles. Um, and I've got one, two, three, four, five of those bottles on hand at all times. Two underneath for the stove inside. Um, two usually outside for spares and the one that I'm currently using hooked up to the tank inside. On a day like today where it's 43 degrees out, it's just beautiful. The heater's off, it's not even on right now. Um, and you'll get used to the temperatures too if you decide to go this crazy and, and try this whole project of living in a trailer in Alaska. Speaking of the cooking, um, that has its own challenges as well.
So if you've watched my channel for any amount of time or checked out any of the videos that I do on a regular basis, you'll see that in a lot of my videos, there's food. One of the most common things that anybody that I've talked to who lives in a trailer long term talks about is you get to a point where the kitchens are so small and it's such a hassle to do anything in the kitchen that you start eating a lot of junk food. Um, and again, you know, you are what you eat, right? Your mood is dictated by the amount of calories and the type of calories that you're putting into your body every day. Uh, and I found that I was falling down that trap myself. I have always liked to cook. I've always been a good cook in the kitchen. I've always loved making big meals for big families or myself, just cooking fancy and having fun. And I got away from that for a while. So cooking in a trailer is challenging. Storing food in the refrigerator, not having a freezer when it gets so cold inside that you can no longer keep frozen food inside the house. It has to come outside. Um, and just not having the room to do stuff in there. I've played around with making bread. Uh, I've played around with doing all kinds of different stuff in the oven. The oven's too small. <laughs> it's completely different than cooking in your oven at home. Uh, and because of the way that the trailer is set up, it's pretty difficult to get everything 100% level inside there. So um, I've played some games with putting spacers underneath the grates on the top of the stove just so that my eggs don't all slide towards the wall uh, when I'm trying to cook eggs in the morning or when I'm trying to cook anything for that matter. Um, but do yourself a favor and if you decide to make this journey, this adventure of doing this whole trailer life, cook meals. Make, make real good food in your house on a regular basis and don't fall into the trap of I'll just stop and pick something up after work. Um, for people who do not live close to town that are doing this in a trailer, it's not a big deal because you have no choice. You're going to cook every meal in your trailer or you're going to do what I do for most of the summer and cook most of my stuff outside over a fire. Um, but being as I work in a grocery store and I'm in town five days a week, usually in town six days a week when you count me going to town to do laundry, it's really easy to fall into that trap of doing the whole fast food thing. Cooking food in a trailer can be a pain in the neck. You never have enough room, you never have enough pots, you never have enough burners, your oven's too small. A lot of negatives to it, but the positive is you got great food, 100% cooked by you, off grid, in one of the most peaceful atmospheres you will ever have it in. Trust me, it's worth doing it. I could do this whole thing much better if I had a beer. I'll be right back. So what other issues do you have to worry about if you're going to live off grid in a trailer and some of the problems that I've had? Um, I have an older trailer. Uh, you know, we've already discussed that and because of that it's not built as well as the newer ones are and I've had constant constant battles with the door on my trailer um, for whatever reason the way I have it set up and again I could have just alleviated this myself by putting a guard over the top of that door um, as the snow melts from the heat inside the trailer the water runs down and at least once or twice a year I'm fighting the lock on the door uh, sometimes it takes me 45 minutes to get in or out of the trailer. Uh, while that sounds dangerous, getting out of the trailer, know that if it was really an emergency, I could get out of that door. I'd just push right through it. But I'm trying to get out without breaking the, the, the door completely. Um, there's been a couple of times this winter where I've had to, and last winter, use a bungee cord on the door to keep it closed while I was inside, and use a bungee door on the door to keep it closed when I was outside. So, just little things that you have to fight with and deal with on a regular basis. Um, windows, keeping the inside warm. Uh, we've already discussed the whole floor gets cold, no insulation in the floor, no insulation in the ceiling. The walls have very limited insulation uh, and more often than not when we get a really really cold streak of 20 below and colder for weeks on end 
uh, ice will start to form on the inside of the walls behind anything. So if you have a cushion against the wall, behind the wall the ice will start to form on that wall. And the reason for this is because one of the byproducts of propane when it burns is water. So there's a lot of moisture in the air and when the air, the moist air hits those places that don't get heat, generally speaking, um, it freezes on contact. Uh, earlier this year in an earlier video I showed me grabbing, I do it every spring, I pull all my clothes out from the opposite side of my bed that I have set there and again I probably could have just built shelves uh, but I didn't want to do anything extra than I had to do in the trailer uh, other than the stuff I needed to survive but the clothes eventually froze to the floor uh, and I'll... let me show you it's my fault you see the ice right there so <laughs> I've been working my way oh god Ugh. Ugh. Look at that ice. <laughs> Perf pants, anyone? <laughs> okay, on top of that, we also have issues with ice behind the cushions on the couch, ice building up on the inside of the door, ice building up on the floor. Ice becomes a way of life. I don't think it makes a difference on the edge or the age of the trailer at all when it comes to the fact that ice will become your number one nemesis. Uh, if you've got any water in your sink traps you know the elbow pipes underneath your sink pretty much guaranteed it's going to freeze at least once on you in a season uh, no matter how well you run the heater there's been days when the temperature outside and this year it got to 31 below zero here on the property and i think that was late november early december and it's been a mild winter you know and i know that 31 degrees fahrenheit below zero sounds like it's brutal but believe me it's been a mild winter because we didn't have the long stretches of brutal cold that we normally do uh, but there was a time when I had to run both heaters inside the trailer. I do have two. Um, I have the, the bigger buddy heater, uh, and then I have the smaller one that I generally use most of the year. Um, but I had to use the smaller one on the floor because I couldn't even sit on the couch. It was so cold. Uh, there was a couple of days where I had to just basically stay up above um, in the bedroom area of the trailer that actually all the heat goes up to because it was too cold to do anything down in the living room. Um, like I said, carpets on the floor, multiple layers of socks. You do what you got to do to get where you want to get, and, uh, and and that's what I've done so far. Some of the other things that I could probably give you a heads up on right now too. You probably have to plan more when you're living in a trailer than you have to plan when you're living in a house or a tent. And the reason why is because if you decide to do this whole off-grid thing in a trailer, you could run out of stuff that you really, really need and put yourself in a pretty dangerous situation quickly. The example is the backup multiple backup propane bottles um, making sure that they're full generally speaking when they run out i might wait this time of the year until i have two bottles to take in to fill up but almost always in the winter if it's empty it gets filled um, making sure not to store anything that is perishable or uh, that you're going to need on a regular basis, such as a sack of potatoes or water, for that example, on the floor, because uh, it's gonna freeze. There's no way to stop it. Um, I figured a way to elevate my water bottles up off the floor, and even doing that, that section of the floor was still, that section, that level inside the trailer was still too cold and it still froze the water inside the water jugs. So I ended up putting them up on tables. Um, I lost a 10 pound bag of potatoes right off the bat. Um, and I lost most of, maybe half of what I grew last year in potatoes um, because I stored them too low and they froze. And then when they thaw out, they just rot. So um, really pay attention to what you're doing. Really have a good plan for what you're doing and follow through on it. Don't take any shortcuts when it comes to your plan um, and when it doesn't work don't hesitate to manipulate it so that it does 
You know, uh, you could have the greatest plan in the world, and, and if it doesn't work, well, then you go to plan B, and don't worry, because, you know, if plan A doesn't work, there's 25 more letters in the alphabet, right? Just come up with a new one. Um, everybody's situation is going to be unique, and everybody's situation is going to be different. Be adaptable. I've probably put on and taken off every single part that I've done on here so far because these instructions are the worst instructions I've ever seen. And you need to be that way with everything. Have patience when you're doing this because I don't care how good your plan is, something's going to go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Nice, that went together rather easily. Once I actually found the instruction page. <laughs> we covered we covered heating we covered electrical we covered water uh, we covered cooking uh, somewhat touched on storage one of the things that I did for um, the fifth wheel trailer for myself was knowing that the bathroom wasn't going to work because I can't pull it out and drain the tank uh, once you're pretty much parked where you're going to be parked in your piece of Alaska you can pretty much count on it being there until spring uh, so I knew I wasn't going to use the bathroom, so I turned the whole back section where the bathroom was into my storage area. Uh, it's mainly for dry goods and pots and pans and that kind of stuff because there comes a point, obviously, in the year where um, 
it's going to get so cold back in that back bathroom that anything you put back there is going to freeze. So keep that in mind. Um, I think we touched on the blankets that I hang over the windows, and if not, I'll mention it again right now. Uh, one of the ways that I found to help keep the the heat on the inside of the trailer is by using blankets, um, and I hang them up over the windows. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like inside. Uh, it can make it dull and dreary, which is another reason why you want bright lights in there when you're doing stuff. Uh, but at the same token, it can save a whole bunch of energy, uh, a whole bunch of heat in the trailer because these windows are single pane at best. They're not sealed very well and uh, they, they're not designed to keep heat in. There's just no way they're designed to keep heat in. Um, the other thing is that generally speaking, the blankets that I have hung on the windows upstairs will stay there year round. Uh, the reason for that is because during the months that we're getting into right now, I go to work at I'm up at 2.30 in the morning to go to work, and uh, I go to bed at about 7 o'clock at night, um, and it's daylight until 9 p.m. So while I generally don't have a problem falling asleep in the daylight, uh, if you're new to Alaska and you're new to late light hours, uh, it's going to mess with you. So. You'll want to keep the blankets or some kind of covering up above so that you can, or wherever your sleeping area is, so that it'll be dark in there when you want to go to sleep. Uh, I think we've discussed most of the negatives. What are the positives of doing it? It's a pretty cheap way to live. Um, I spend a pretty good amount of money, I guess, on propane every year, uh, every winter, and not so much in the summer because all I'm using the propane for then is generally the refrigerator and, and you know, when I'm making coffee and stuff in the morning. But that's pretty much my expenses. Um, compare that to renting a place or uh, building a place immediately when you when you get on site. If you've got the money to do that, by all means do so. But for me, I didn't. Uh, so this has worked out really, really well. Gave me a chance to get ahead on my payments on the property till I paid it off. So I paid the property off. It's done. I own it. Um, put some money in the bank for lumber for the construction for this project so it can be all cash. Uh, but again, I'm a single guy living in a trailer. It's a lot easier for a single guy to live in a trailer than it is for even a couple to live in a trailer, let alone a family to live in a trailer. Um, if you think that I'm kidding, there's two families that you can look at that will, boy, I tell you what, if you send them a message and ask them um, how, how easy it was for them to live with their family in their trailer, uh, I think you will be surprised at the answer. <laughs> you shouldn't be after watching this. One is Mapleberry Farm Off Grid. Um, and, and they just have the one daughter and they have a beautiful, their trailer's dialed. It was a beautiful, beautiful trailer. Uh, but I think that they would agree with me when I say that that, you know, if, as long as it's a temporary solution, make it as temporary as you possibly can. And the other, uh, the other family that's, that, that did it, um, that finally had to give up because they had, it, the mold was an issue, everything was an issue, was, um, Wild Wonderful Off Grid. Uh, so check check them out. Send them a message if you want. Tell them Sean in Alaska said, hey, I need to ask you about what it's like living with a family in a trailer. Uh, but I, I think if you watch some of their videos, you'll you'll definitely get the same vibe uh, that I'm that I'm giving you right now. Um, so the, we we discussed the pros. I can't stress enough how incredible it is when you're off grid. And the only sounds that I have on this property right now, while I'm standing here with you talking is the wind as it's kind of blowing through the trees a bit, the chickens over here in their little chicken run, and nothing else. It's just, oh, and the fire crackling away over there. It's starting to burn finally. It's just so peaceful. And one of my favorite things living on the property is when I'm laying up in the, in the sleeping area up above and the wind is howling outside and because the windows are those flipper windows that never really seal, you know, the ones that kind of open up like this, um, the wind sneaks up through those and I, I get a breeze on my face and I, as the wind is just echoing outside. It's, it's incredible. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. Anyway, that's about it for me. I'm going to go uh, sit down and have the rest of this beer and then uh, probably figure out what I'm going to do for dinner tonight. I was going to do corned beef and cabbage because uh, I went to the brewery on St. Patrick's Day and... and uh, did corned beef there, and I have all the fix in here, and I had planned on doing it here today, but now I'm thinking it'll be my Sunday night dinner, and then I'll make sandwiches for work on Monday. Uh, but uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope this answered a bunch of your questions, and if you've got any more questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to reach out. Leave a comment down below in this video. Um, if you think that you have friends that might be interested in this, feel free to share this video out as well. Uh, and, you know, 
My email is down in the About section uh, of my YouTube page. And if you've got any more specific questions, by all means, let me know. You guys have a great day. Oh.